Hello Summoners and welcome back to another Pro Guides video. My name is Nathan Ning and I'm here with the 12.23 mid-patch update. We'll be going over updated tier lists for all 5 roles and follow up on some balance changes from the patch. But before we get to the tier list, I want to take a minute to remind you that, while meta videos and other content are a great way to pick up some quick tips, if you're really super serious about improving, you should head over to ProGuides.com. Our coaching staff is made up of top level players and they're available 24-7, so it's always a good time to stop by. And for just $7.99 a month, you can take your ProGuides experience to the next level. Our premium sub gives you access to all of our courses and bootcamp content, and we'll even throw in a 10% coaching discount. If you're ready to take your gameplay to the next level, trust me, it's worth every penny. Now, on to the tier list. First, we'll be starting off with our top laners. Quinn moves up to the OP tier this patch. She's a strong lane bully that can keep down the other scaling picks really well, while also scaling well herself as an extra ADC on the team. Then there's her dual role as an assassin, able to constantly make picks on foes that move up too far on their own. All around, Quinn is basically always at least pretty good as a top laner regardless of the meta. And after recent balance changes, she's doing even better. Hydra's nerfs means that the ridiculously OP bruisers that were abusing it have to be scaled way back, so those matchups are a bit less risky for you as Quinn. Also, Quinn does super well against tanks. A lot of other ranged top laners just get run down by tanks and juggernauts, but with Quinn's movement speed and vaults, it's super easy to keep kiting them. She can also itemize super well against them, with her core being Kraken, Zerkers, and Blade of the Rune King, allowing you to shred down the beefy boys. She's our pick of the patch for the top lane. Dr. Mudo also moves up to the OP tier. Anytime Riot says that they are giving Champion an adjustment, it seems that it always ends up just being a big buff. By targeting Mundo's healing, he's become a pretty unkillable monster. By adding a bit of skill expression, they made it so that a good Mundo can soak up way more damage than before. Also, by shifting his bonus AD fully into his E's passive and away from his ultimate, they made it so that he does a ton of damage all the time, rather than just having to specifically fight around his R's cooldown. We warned that we could have been underestimating Zack's buffs in the patch rundown, and we were definitely right about that. Between that and the Hydra nerfs, he's pretty much as strong now as he was earlier in Season 12 when he first popped off as a meta top laner. His laning is strong, with tons of kill pressure when you run Ignite, and once you get a small lead, he can easily snowball out of control with it. Fiora drops down to the S tier. She took a bit of a hit from Hydra's nerfs, as expected, but is still definitely a very strong pick. She's just less auto win, and requires a bit more effort to actually outscale people now. Wukong gets emoted to the A tier. Since Wu doesn't have as much anti-tank in his kit as Fiora, he was a lot more reliant on the ridiculous amount of stats that he got from Hydra, so the nerf is hitting him even harder. He's for sure still viable as a pick, but one that's a bit more situational. Camille falls down to the B tier. With her skill floor being much higher than the other bruisers, even when Hydra was broken, she didn't have quite the showing that Fiora did. Her upward ceiling for carrying was just about as high when played perfectly. But when it comes to making a tier list, we have to focus on the average player for the ELO that we're talking about. Just to clarify, our meta videos are aimed at high gold to plat range. Post Hydra nerf, Camille is back to being a very situational pick. You want a really good lane matchup, so I don't really recommend blinding her. Kennen spent most of Season 12 as a pretty awful top laner. He lost to everyone and would end up being so far behind, his classic godlike teamfighting wasn't very godlike at all. He really only worked as a mid laner, but after lots of meta shifts, he ended up being in a spot where he's at least good as a counterpick, specifically to some of the more popular top laners, like Fiora, GP, and Cassante. Channel got hit incredibly hard by his nerfs this patch, so we're moving him down all the way to the D tier. Even in the very best situations, he's just a bad pick, and there's always at least a couple of better options. Now for the jungle, here's our list. Tanks have been pretty controversial this preseason. A lot of people have been crying about them being OP with all their new items, but we've already talked about that not exactly being the case in a few of our videos. Stat-wise, the majority of tanks have been between bad and mediocre, but they aren't exactly bad either. The issue comes down to itemization. When everyone is slapping hard steel on every single champion as a first item rush, it's no wonder that so many champions have been performing poorly. That item is only good on certain champions. Most prefer Jack Show or Gauntlet. Due to their overall low win rates, Riot pushed out a ton of buffs this patch. Now when you build them with the items that were already doing well on them, some picks are absolutely overbearing. And three champions in particular are really abusing that in the jungle. The first one of those is Rammus. He's been all over the place in the past few months. He was really good, and then really bad, and then really really good, and then just mediocre. With this patch, he's back on the upswing and he's looking better than ever. So far, he's looking like the best jungler and maybe even just the best pick in the game, period. Obviously, stats can be a bit skewed when you have a couple of days of data to go off of, but his pick rate is decently high and his win rate is incredibly good at all levels of play. Maokai also moves up to the OP tier. The revamp that they gave him back on 12.17 made Maokai incredibly broken. Nerf after nerf had brought him down to a spot where he was still pretty decent but not insanely OP, but the preseason kinda killed him. 
So Wright did the natural thing and gave him a huge buff to take us back to square one. He's right back on being a super strong pick in the jungle, with little to no counterplay for foes once he gets rolling. The third champion that will be moving up to the OP tier in the jungle is Mundo. Mundo technically isn't a tank, he's really a juggernaut. But no matter what label you give him, there's no denying the fact that his changes have made him an absolute monster this patch in this role as well. Lilia's nerf this patch did make her a bit weaker in the role, but it didn't quite hit as hard as we expected. So we're moving her up one notch to the S tier. She's still a pretty strong pick, especially when the enemy team takes a lot of beefy targets for you to burn down in extended fights. Kha'Zix, on the other hand, is really struggling. He does wars with so many tanky foes. That, in conjunction with the new jungle being more difficult for him to clear, makes him jump down to the B tier. You only want to pick him when the enemy team is full of squishies that you can pick off later. As with top lane, the nerfs here hit even harder than expected, so we're moving Trendle down to the C tier. There are pretty much no matchups that are just so good that you have to pick him. There's always a better counterpick that will be more useful. Now, here's our mid lane tier list. Like Mundo, Kassadin got a so-called quote-unquote adjustment that has left him looking very broken this patch. Kassadin was already all about scaling up to dominating in teamfights later on. The change to his E made it so that cooldown is reduced for every spell cast in fights by both allies and enemies. Obviously, this is going to get the most value in the late game teamfights where he's already good. Now, when you make it there, he's an absolute monster of a champion. Vex moves down to the S tier. She's a super solid champion with a well-rounded kit that includes a bit of everything. She has poke, burst, and even some engage. She's also good at all stages of the game, but with the current meta, her upper ceiling for hard carrying games is just a bit lower than our OP tier picks. Fizz drops down to the A tier. He's overall in a pretty good spot, but if the enemy team has too many tanky targets, you'll struggle to carry the game or the rest of your team isn't doing well. You'll always be able to make picks on squishy carries, but the lack of tank killing in such a tank heavy meta means that he can't really make it to our top 2 tier levels. Xerath drops down to the B tier. He's a super situational pick right now. There are a lot of champions that you can't deal with as Xerath in the current meta. In the mid lane, two of the strongest most popular picks, Zed and Kassadin, will absolutely farm you post 6. In the other roles, tanks and juggernauts can just shrug off your poke and run you down in fights. You only want to pick him when you know that you have a good lane and the enemy team comp has enough squishies to make your poke mean something. Aurelian Soul gets moted to the B tier. He's just overall pretty mediocre right now. Riot's still working on his big update, so I won't even waste time learning him. Save climbing that steep mastery curve until they're done. In the right situation, Vladimir is a disgustingly strong carry that can literally 1v9 games once you make it past 3 items. But in the wrong situation, he literally sucks, because well, he's like a vampire. And you end up being so far behind that you can't ever really come online in time to do anything. Definitely save blocking him in for when you see your lane opponent as well as most of the enemy team. Corky moves up to the C tier. He's just not doing quite as horribly as he was before, but it's still pretty hard to justify picking him. There are plenty of other hyper-scaling AP picks that get much better results. The one thing that he does bring to the table that no other champion can match is the package. Yeah, he has a gigantic package. It can completely decide a fight all on its own with a good angle. But you also have to just remember that it requires your team to play around a long cooldown, and actually following up when you use it, which isn't always going to happen in solo queue. Syndra has dramatically dropped off this patch, so we're moving her down to the C tier. We knew the nerfs would hurt, but we didn't think it would be this bad. Maybe this is just due to us having a couple of days of data to go off of, but she's still a really popular champion, so there are already quite a lot of games to go off of. Still, consider it a bit tentative. Now let's move things down to the bot lane. Once again, we have another patch where the bot lane meta isn't really shifting much, with just one entry per role here. Varus moves up to the A tier. Placing him is a bit tricky. In the right situation, Varus can be really broken. Against a team of tanky foes, he's like an OP tier champion when you do the Riftmaker build. But against foes that have a lot of mobility when you have to build AD, he looks quite a bit weaker. Being so situational, we can't really place him any higher at the moment. Kaisa moves up to the A tier. Kaisa's scaling is really good, especially against all the tanks being played right now. But her big issue is actually reaching that point. If she had a better laning phase, she would easily be S plus material, but there are just so many bad lanes that she's just too inconsistent to make it any higher. Zeri's buffs this patch have definitely helped her, but it's not entirely clear just how good she is. Overall, she's performing perfectly average at all levels of play. We'll be shifting her to the B tier for now, but this is definitely subject to change. Misfortune also gets moved to the B tier. If enough of the enemy team is squishy, she's still a great pick, but she really struggles against tankier opponents. With beefy boys being so popular right now, you'll just want to wait to pick her later in the draft. To finish things off, we have our supports. A byproduct of buffs aimed at making Zack a better top and jungler is that he's become a really strong support. We should have seen this one coming. He's already on the cusp of being a good support again, with a pretty decent buff to his Q, as well as Sunfire being better and cheaper. He's right back to being absolutely busted, so we're putting him in the OP tier. Amumu has gone through the exact same thing. The preseason hit the guy a little bit harder, so Riot gave him some love this patch to really help him out in the jungle. 
It definitely helped him quite a bit, but he's still not great there. But as a support, the buffs have brought him way up, putting him in the OP tier just like Zack. And that about wraps things up for our 12.23 mid-patch update. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Feel free to let me know your thoughts on where the champions fall in the tier list in the comment section below. Also, check out our description for a link to join our Discord community. As always, good luck summoners, stay safe, stay healthy, and have a wonderful day. Peace.